Yes, I understand what you mean, but it's just not what I had in mind. Hmm. Well, now, this is a very good unit. Oh, yes, but this is a utility. Yes, but what a very good car. No. They're an excellent no. machine to have, you know. Yeah. Oh, there have been times when I could have used one, but... Uh... It's beautiful mechanically. No. You know, this car is in first-class mechanical condition. No, it's just that I would, look wouldn't use the back. A very days, good so. car. Yeah. Now, this might be more in line with what you're looking for. It's a bit small. No. Well, well this car was used seats. by a little old lady, you know. <laughs> look at it, in perfect yeah. condition. Yeah. Back seat's never been sat in. It's a beautiful motor car, very economical. Yeah. No, no, I want something larger, I think. Well, the one alongside here is more in the larger line. Yeah. What this is the 1960 model, this one. Has yeah. been beautifully kept. Yes. Look at it. Yeah. Look at the upholstery in there. Yeah. Pitiful seat belts. I yes, you need those car. these days. Oh, yeah. not necessarily. It depends on how you drive. There's always a maniac around, you know. I'll tell you what, have you got anything in an automatic? I have just what you're looking for. I've been for. interested in one of those for a long time. Now, this car here. Automatic transmission, yeah. beautiful machine to drive. Every yeah. man owes it to himself to have an automatic transmission. Yeah. They make driving so simple. Yeah. You know? Look at the interior of that car. It's perfect. Beautiful colouring. Fits in with the rest of the car. Yeah. The car looks distinctive, you know? How much is this one? Oh, don't worry about the price, my friend. This is a beautiful motor car, and no matter which way you look at it, and I can assure you, you'll be able to buy it. Well, I can give it to you on very it? easy terms. Well, I'd have to have it Excellent terms. mechanically, you know? Yeah. Really is. Would Look it be possible star. to have a, a bit of a test inside? drive? Yes, please yeah. take a seat in the motor car and you can take it for a drive. Yeah. Right. Does he know that the car he's just bought will faithfully mirror his behaviour? If he's like most of us, that behaviour will be the sort he'd rather keep hidden. Man at the wheel is not the best place to observe man the builder, the creator of civilization, the social animal. Cars reveal some very antisocial people indeed. Some buyers consider a higher purchase agreement a way to acquire a cheap car. Ideal transport for that trip north. That holiday in the sun. It takes months for the finance company to catch up with their reluctant client, if then. More than one finance company sends a man to surface paradise each winter to round up their cars. friends often show a strong sense of righteous indignation when their own turn comes. Many of the effects of cars on individuals are good. They are great for the budding engineer and provide a healthy outlet for young people's need to make things, to come to grips early in life with today's mechanical environment. All too often, their motives are misunderstood. Instead of setting a good example, the oldies sometimes reveal their jealousy of today's affluent teenagers. Some of the criticism is undeserved. Very few young drivers are reckless maniacs. But the fact remains that drivers under 25 do cause more deaths and injuries than any other age group. People between 17 and 25 hold only 18% of all licenses, but cause 34% of all fatal accidents. Though young drivers are fearless and quick to learn, their weakness is their impatience. When one is young, nothing is worse than waiting. Even 10 seconds.
room. Oh, look, switch that thing off, will you? When are you going to fix your room? I'll do it later, Mum. There's the ironing too, you know. I'm not going to do everything. The miles of dormitory suburbs are fine for mums and dads. They enjoy the peace and stability of hearth and home. But this atmosphere stifles young people. The motor car is their release. The chariot in which they escape to fields of exploration and adventure. Parents worry. Firstly, about the physical risk. Secondly, because the car gives kids opportunities to accomplish those things which most mothers would prefer them to bespoke. Adults should worry about their own behaviour in cars. Aggression, inattention, an overdeveloped sense of one's rights can be seen on every road in Australia. Many a serious accident is averted by luck, not good management. Temper and aggression are not the only failings revealed by the car. Could it be that mechanised sloth will replace health and physical fitness? Nobody challenges the car's usefulness and convenience. We don't have to use our legs anymore. This very fact contributes to ill health. The best treatment a doctor could prescribe for many an overweight, out-of-condition businessman would be to tear up his driving license. Many a soft car seat is helping its owner along the way to a coronary. Not only our sloth, but our violence, our exhibitionism, and our irresponsibility are all too often reflected in the glossy finish of the family wagon. Civilization makes man kindly, thoughtful, and courteous. His conduct on the footpath seems to be left behind once he gets behind the wheel. Perhaps it's just the natural reaction to overcrowded roads and a tradition of inconsiderate motoring. never dies. But we are lucky if inattention only makes fools of us.
We've all suffered from the selfishness of others. Cars and trucks have contributed more towards the noise of cities than anything else. So far, nobody's been able to convince society that noise costs money. If they did, something would be done quickly. At present, we spend long periods of our lives in a state of tension. The man in the hotel room listening to the blast of cars, the executive in an office next to the street, the man on the telephone who has to put a finger to his ear to hear above the rumble of buses, all share the same bodily mechanisms which triggered the caveman's leap at the snap of a twig. At the wrong time and place, a car and its driver is simply a noisy, ill-mannered nuisance. At the other end of the scale, a car is a universal symbol of status and prestige. The physical manifestation of our dreams of success, power and riches. to believe that our car will enrich our lives, open new horizons of enjoyment, make us irresistible to the opposite sex. We laugh sometimes at the extravagance of car advertising, yet car manufacturers in trying to say something fresh about the everyday article they make are only looking for a way to make contact with the real desires of the buyers. Advertising people today say that the motivations which make people buy something aren't necessarily the reasons they reveal when asked. Thus we may dream of owning a car for power, for success, to capture the envy of others. So it's not strange that the advertisements reflect these desires. Everybody is impressed, secretly or openly, by a luxury car. There are some who get most of their satisfaction from car ownership when basking in the envy of onlookers. Much can be told about a person's mental makeup by the sort of car he drives.
Living beyond one's means is a situation familiar to some of us. If I see the words final notice once more, I don't know what I'll do. Well, there it is. Now, something's got to go. What? Well, you tell me. What can go? Well, there's the car, but the car is a necessity, let's face it, isn't it? Now, is it? Look, after all, it's nice, but we managed without it four months ago. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, let's get on to... We'll leave the car for the time being. Now, what about the fridge? Oh, don't be silly. Of course we have to have a fridge. Well, there's the television. Well, yes, it's nice, I suppose. You could do without it, but hell, it keeps us in and we don't spend money going out. I mean, it's interesting for the children to have. Yes, We're talking of the children there, what about all these new uniforms and all the school expenses? Are they essential? You want your children to grow, don't you? They have to have uniforms, they get bigger each year, and they need the lot, and there's nothing you can cut down on there. Wait a what's this one? I thought we paid for Freddie's glasses. Well, we had, but he broke the lens and it had to be fixed. But four dollars! What about the in-laws? Do you think we can approach them again? No, I don't. They've helped us enough. They've helped yeah. with the house and with the furniture. I don't think they've got it anyway. No, they've been very good. It's so embarrassing. Well, look. How would you feel if we got rid of the car? Not completely. I mean, I'll, I'll get a cheaper one, an old one, second hand. Would it upset you very much? No. I suppose the street would laugh at us a bit, but... No, it's... it's the only thing to don't do. Don't worry, don't worry. It'll only be for a short time. Things will get better, don't worry. Okay, then I'll get rid of the car. At last, our friend comes to his senses. Three months too late. Yeah, I, I know it's all, it's all my fault, but you know, I just bit off more than I could chew, that's all. But I can't even afford to pay the third payment now, and it's due. How many payments have you made? Only two. My wife and I had a discussion, and I just can't afford it, and that's all there is to it. Oh. Yeah, I, I've looked after the car. Do you, don't you think you could raise the price at all? Well, my friend, business is business. I can't give you more than the car's worth to me. Yeah, but what you're offering me, I mean, I owe still more on it. That's a problem between you and the finance company. I don't come into that part of it. But it's in good condition, you'll agree there. Quite reasonably so. There's a bit of a growl in the drift that'll have to be fixed up. It's come in nicely and a few scratches in the duco. Bit of work, cost me a few bob to put it back on the road, you know. Yeah, but it still seems pretty small, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's it, my friend. A thousand dollars is as much money as we can give you. I think it's a pretty fair price myself. You think it over. Unfortunately, when we get into financial difficulties over our car, we blame everyone except ourselves. We forget our greed, our inability to face the facts of financial life. When trouble comes, we blame the dealer, the car, or the people who lent us the money to buy it. trouble, our motorist takes what he feels to be the only way out. He gives it back to the finance company. motorist in these circumstances sometimes gets nasty and takes his frustration and rage out on someone else. The finance company is usually the target.
too much of our frustration, aggression and competitive spirit spills over onto the road. A slip of the foot on the accelerator can be taken as a challenge. The motor car is here to stay. So is human nature. It's obvious which must adapt to the other. Pull over, driver. The number of cars will double in the next 10 years. Every person of driving age will have one. Roads, especially in the cities, will become more crowded with vehicles. Speeds will rise. Our only concern with the behaviour of people in their cars should be its effect on others. If people daydream at the wheel, if they lose their tempers, if they work off youthful spirits on crowded roads, they cause accidents. If they drive their cars noisily, they become a nuisance. Turning the street into a boxing ring inconveniences others. If they let their eyes run away with their pocketbook, they hurt their families. Passing more laws isn't the answer because we can't legislate human nature out of existence. One cure is to see ourselves as others see us. Leaving the scene of this whirlwind courtship, we ask, did you appear in our cast this evening?